Um, so just to give you a sense for what the dates are about, date one is the birth of Balaam Ahal, Lord Jaguar, the king of Portugero. Date two is his accession to rulership. Dates three through six involve his early war campaigns, all victorious and culminating with date six in a victory over Como Calco. Dates seven, eight, and nine operate together and reference a ritual in 353 AD. Uh, day 10 is the building dedication rite, uh, which is the building or the sanctuary that housed Monument 6. And it's an important ritual fulcrum of the text that links directly to the 2012 date. And date 11, like date 8, is a Hotun ending. Day 12 is a sweat bath sanctuary rite, and day 13 is the 2012 date. So basically, this is a biographical monument with Lord Jaguar as the protagonist. It's all about his life. And Maya kings did this kind of thing. They erected monuments to glorify themselves and to make sort of uh, propaganda statements about their greatness and why they're great and, and what they did and all their victories and war victories and stuff like that. This has a special focus on 2012. Why would he even include the 2012 date? Well, because Maya kings liked to associate themselves with these great creation myth scenarios and these great period endings in the long count. It's, it's what elevated their status. There's also a lunar eclipse. Date three is a lunar, well, it's actually three days after lunar eclipse, but Michael Grove actually figured out that um, there's a lunar eclipse that happens three days before this date three and it was positioned right in the dark rift. Kind of like the way that the lunar eclipse last month on the solstice would be positioned right at the dark rift at the crossroads. Date three in 644 AD is exactly the same thing. But it again shows a selection of an astronomical event or alignment that emphasizes or highlights the dark rift in the Milky Way and the crossroads. The sweat bath rite in 510 AD is also a date on which the sun was positioned at the dark rift in the Milky Way at the crossroads of Milky Way and Clifton. Same place where the sun is in 2012. So uh, fully you have um, four out of the 13 days are dates when the sun was aligned with the dark rift crossroads. Barbara McLeod contributed to some, some, some thoughts to this, very important stuff. Uh, you could go through all of these dates and find connections to the 2012 date that are beyond just the distance number connection. So you have astronumerology, which means that, say for example, this date in 667 is connected by these, these uh, these, the interval between the 667 date and the 2012 date is connected with these uh, divisors, 260, 360, 364, 378, and 819. There's a lot of intention going on in the construction of this monument. And, uh, you know, I can't believe that the construction in this way would be a coincidence, especially because of the structural parallel between his birthday in the left flange and the 2012 date in the right flange. Well, is it a coincidence? Well, maybe, but maybe not. And if so, why would Lord Jaguar embed so many of these kinds of alignments into his biographical monument? Well, it's what Maya kings did. You know, there's endless examples of Maya kings relating themselves to the great cycles of the long count. Uh, the famous example from Palenque is Pakal relating his birth and accession to this future 20 Baktum period ending way off in 4772 AD. That works too for propaganda, polemics and propaganda. That's what Maya King did. Uh, Lord Jaguar selected the 13th Baktun ending in 2012 because it was very handy because he was born on, a, on, a, on an astronomical analogy to it. Um, 18 Rabbit from Copan, of course, Kaktiliu from Caragua related himself to the 3114 BC. Uh, period ending, and uh, and so this is this could is not have done these things. He could not have utilized this propaganda strategy unless he was aware that the sun was going to be aligned with the crossroads and dark rift in 2012. Right? He he couldn't have seen an analogy to his birth date. He couldn't have drawn these parallels. He couldn't have written the inscription in, in the way that he did uh, unless he was aware of the galactic alignment in 2012. Now, you know. Um, 
because of the structure of the long count, uh, it's very likely that that placement of the end of the 13th block tune would have already had to have been embedded into the structure of the long count from the very get-go, back to the origins of the long count, 800 years before Portuguero, Lord Jaguar. So it seems to me the best interpretation is that there was an already existing knowledge that was embedded into the long count at its origin point, I believe, within the Azopan context. And then it was floating around and it was there to use, and then this king came along and he happened to be born on this analogous position in 612 AD, and he used it with full effect, you know, for his own propaganda campaign. But more than that, though, it, well, I don't think it was just about power. I think that it was actually, he believed that he had gained this divine status in which he would be the one, he would be the one that would be invoked in 2012 to be present for the ceremony with Bolo Yote and probably even perform the sacrifice of Bolo Yote, the deity sacrifice that's necessary in order to successfully facilitate transformation and renewal into the next cycle. We know that Maya kings would often invoke departed ancestors uh, to be present in spirit, to supervise or even participate in ceremonial rituals. So I believe that Lord Jaguar, knowing this, was preparing himself to be that departed ancestor that would be invoked in 2012, to be present in spirit, to perform the sacrifice and act. So um, that's basically the summary here. Um, and uh, that's it in a nutshell. I'm sorry we didn't have time to go into more detail on some of the, those things. But uh, that's it. I don't know if we do have time for a question or two. Um, we all we kind of went long. Let's take two questions. Okay, two questions. And real then we'll quick. do it individually after that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be hanging around. So yeah, feel free. Yes. I have a question. Okay. Um, I don't Yeah. And with a name like Lord Jaguar, you know that's like Joe Smith among the Maya. <laughs> so, um, in the history of the classic period, we do not hear anything about Tortuguero at all. Uh, he, it might be part of Palenque as a site, uh, as Comarcalco may have been, uh, but really not very important even in its history, the history of Palenque, which of course, so my, my idea is, why is this Joe Smith writing this extensive monument about this death? I, and I believe that he, I mean, this is typical of any historical yeah. uh, Stella that they write 13 dates, because they have a date for everything uh, mm -hmm. of when they write it. And it's usually on an, an ending, a period ending. So the 919000 would have been common, or the 9 or 8, whatever. Yeah. So my point is, what was he trying to say? Uh, I, I, this is a site that's extremely small or non-existent today, but even then it was extremely small. So it's not like you want to create your dynasty of a powerful site. What is it that would historically uh, mm -hmm. make this Lord Jaguar want to say, I am so great that I will live, or my memory will live, until the end of this era. Okay. Yeah, well, all kingdoms start out small, and all kingdoms vie for power, and, and so they but do their... But state small. Right, right, it, uh, as far as we know. Well, but I think it played a very important role, because all his, all his war campaigns were victorious, and I think that what was going on in that region at the time, um, uh, right before Balamahau was born, uh, Palenque uh, was decimated by Kalakmul. Now, Pakal was also a youngster. Pakal is, uh, is just, uh, you know, 10 years older than Balamahau. So it seemed like the, the region needed a hero. You know, the region needed a reformer, somebody to take back the power. And I think that both Pakal and Khan Balam, his son, as well as, um, uh, Lord Jaguar at nearby Tortuguero were doing their best to reestablish order and power in the region. So there was a general need to reassert power status. And 
Pakal did that, and Kanvalam did that by representing his father Pakal as being related to the 20th Batum uh, ending. And so Lord Jaguar's um, uh, strategy was very similar to that. I don't know what happened. Uh, it seemed like, um, uh, or why Tortuguero didn't really um, grow into a big superpower. You know, there's, there's many sites, uh, there's many monuments at Tortuguero that can also be looked at. I and went to Tortuguero. Pacal prevented me from getting in. But oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> And yeah. I've been to the Villa and I've seen, I'm photographed, uh, the stewards took a, a photo of my husband right next to the Tortuguero monument when it was not known that it was so important. And the uh, a T shape, I I cannot envision that monument at all because I cannot see a stella that's sticking out with two wings. Was it in Was it in the museum or was it? In the, the museum. Yeah, yeah. But 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 the side, where where could it have been? Oh, uh, they believe it was in one of the sanctuaries there in one of the buildings. Like, it was taken out in the fifties, and they don't know exactly which building it was in. See, this is, this is a problem, as you know, with Maya stuff. If you don't have provenience, it's... Oh, well, they have the provenience on where it came from. They just don't know the details. It's, it's hard for me to envision a T-shaped... Um, well, it's pretty... It's, it's somewhat unusual, but uh, structural uh, shapes of monuments is pretty well known. You know, you have things like that going on. Like it, it, at uh, Copan, for example, you have that that uh, woven braid thing with all yeah. the bliss on it. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of neat. Well, and you have the different shapes of the altars, too. Yeah, and but it's, it's, a, it's a stone. Right. But anyway, that's not okay. here nor there. Yeah. I just was, I, to me, feeling that this uh, Lord, ha, uh, Lord Balam, Balam, Balam Ahal, yeah. uh, writing all this uh, for the purpose, for the purpose of doing some galactic uh, calculation it's it's a bit well I don't think he I don't think he did the calculation I think that the knowledge that at that future period ending there would be this alignment was probably part okay. of the uh, and hit he bag. Would be part of it I mean that's he, what he's saying right yes no. yes yes I mean it, you you can have a king at a small site and he thinks as highly of himself as any king from a bigger site so I don't know, that seems to be part of the propaganda thing, but it also seems part of the milieu of what uh, was going on nearby at uh, Palenque, who seemed to be a similar strategy employed by Pakal and Kanbalam to relate themselves to these astronomical locations. Kanbalam, because Pakal did very little. He did, yeah, it's true. Yeah, Kanbalam did a lot of that in like the yes. 690s with the uh, triad group. Yes. Um, because of the late hour, I'm sure our guest speaker can answer any questions. Okay. You have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here.